All right, guys, such a Keegan today. Hope you're all doing well and enjoying your day so far. And despite all the drama right now in the COD scene, Rostermania is still going on. And could Claystep be going the way of Crimsix and getting forced to retire? He reckons that his key opportunities have now fallen through, potentially because of the actions of one team that thought they were going to get him and then changed their mind at last minute. Very much into it to your thoughts in the comment section below. Hit the like button if you enjoy. Subscribe if you were new as always. I'd greatly appreciate it. It really helps out the channel. Thank you very much indeed for doing that one. Plenty to discuss of course today first of all to mention this from Donny Temp here comes the contract has been signed so yes maybe a new deal I suppose in place here for Temp pretty interesting actually just because of course Temp was extended on a one plus one deal so they um what happened after okay so he was on Paris after at the end of Cold War right they decided to let go their entire team Temp didn't really get a better offer therefore they re-signed him for the minimum it seems so what they did is extended his contract on a one plus one basis so he would still have been on the minimum this this season I guess he has said like look I'm not gonna stay around or you know maybe another awkward have bought him out or whatever or at least like do me a solid and actually give me a solid contract this season so what I'm guessing is that they've re-signed a deal up for more money for Don because um you know the rumor has it the Vegas Legion as they are now actually have some more money now or they're just willing to spend a bit more and um can actually give these guys instead of the 50k minimum give them 100 150k or something like you know a salary that's a bit more competitive with the rest of the league and given the fact that they're trying to sign other players to probably similar deals Tim was not just going to say you're going to keep giving me the minimum where I'm like the big star player of this team and then you're going to give these other guys more money for joining. We'll see how that one goes. But yeah, probably Tempest on a new deal with Paris. So good for him, of course. You know, he's making it rain. So um, I mean, yeah, great stuff all around. We also don't know what Vegas are going to do next year because for now, it's still the same ownership group. Like um, we do wonder whether the CDL are thinking, yeah, okay, let's give them the Vegas spot. And then obviously like new potential investors might find that more valuable to buy it off Paris, which obviously would be or buy it off Vegas Legion as they are now which could be a good thing as well but you know we'll see how their season goes hopefully they're not terrible this year we don't exactly know what roster they're going to be forming here and we will see in a second like um you know the closer situation that might have fallen through for this team as well but the record last year this is honestly pretty impressive from Donny the fact that he has a 90 overall rating and this is just purely based on the stats compared to other ARs but like um his record was four in 26 like and it was two in what two in 23 two in 24 in regular CDL play the only other two wins here came at the pro -Am classic so, um, I mean, yeah, honestly, an absolute disaster. Like, 4 and 26 for a 90 rating. Like, it, honestly, I've never seen anything like this in my life. But hopefully this season it's better because last year we did get a great battle to qualify for the World Championship. But we, like, um, I mean, Paris were just never in it. And their series were usually always boring, although there were some interesting game fires. But you always felt like they were going to find a way to lose. So, as long as they're better this year, like, that's all we can really ask for. And they should, on paper, be building a better team than last season. I would at least argue. Let's talk the Mutineers because they they're also building a roster. This, I don't believe, is going to be their roster, but uh, apparently Skies had his chat open and he said, I play for the Mutineers with Stanley Asim and Cap. So either someone like one of his mods just made this up for a troll, which is more than likely, because of course we believe that Skies is going to go the way of the New York Subliners alongside Kismet Hydra and probably Priest as it stands. We'll see what happens there in the coming days. Mutineers, we don't believe we'll have Skies or Awakening anymore, and um, and I don't believe they will have any of these players. Stanley, we think, will go the way of Toronto Ultra in place of where they wanted Afro to be in place of Vance. Asim is a restricted free agent, of course, from the Los Angeles Grillers. We don't know if he's going to go anywhere. I think Florida could be a good team for him, in fairness, but um, you know, he actually declined that offer last year because they wanted him before, and uh, obviously now there's a buyout involved, and they might not be so willing to pay, and even teams like Vegas Legion are not really going to be willing to pay a buyout. They might be now paying more salaries, Vegas, but I doubt they're going to pay a buyout if they can potentially avoid it. And then Cap's still another free agent, unrestricted, that could be available but more than likely will maybe end up on the bench somewhere this season, I would imagine. So anyway, this is not the team that they're forming. The team that they will be forming, I think, is involving Havoc. So the present rumour is, and even they say we love causing Havoc on the timeline, so the current rumour is for the Mutineers that uh, Dave Paddy will actually be on the bench, Major Maniac will be their AR player, with probably Brack as their flex, Havoc as one of their SMGs, and then Vickle from the Ultra and Air Academy. That's the present rumour for. There have been also talks about Nasty and Gizmo flying around this team. Things could most certainly change 
change here, especially like the Major Maniac thing is kind of interesting just because like, um, you know, he was the many R for this team at the end of last year. Good search and destroy player. But if Clay now is an option, do you take that option instead if you are the Mutineers? Because Clay, I think instead of Crim6 doesn't really want a spot that doesn't tick all his boxes. He wants enough money. He wants it to be in a reasonable location. He wants it to kind of be worthwhile his effort because it's been a difficult couple of years for Crim. I think Clay would probably take any spot that gets offered to him. So maybe Mutineers is a good option for him, especially because his other opportunities might have fallen through. Mutineers haven't exactly locked in yet the Mage Maniac thing, so I'm sure there's still some stresses going on behind the scenes. London also would be an interesting one, just because, of course, the whole London thing was a couple of years ago, I think even it was in Modern Warfare, before Clay to join the Dallas Empire, that they actually wanted Clay that season and ended up not coming to an arrangement. So maybe Clay for zero could be interesting. So, like, I'm sure Clay's going to be in the DMs because he still wants to compete, and as of now, it doesn't seem like he has good offers on the table. But Zero and Paul X have been doing a lot of tweeting at each other lately, so that makes me think that Zero Paul X is going to be the AR duo at London. Hopefully with like Nasty and Wardy or something. We'll see what they decide to do if of course they go for Paul X because Gizmo could still be an option that's tough to say whether that's better or worse. Let's talk Haggy as well because he's in a similar boat apparently to Claystair. He tweets the following out. Some things fell through with a potential team so I'm now pursuing other options. If any teams are looking to improve or expand their coaching staff I am more than certain that I can have a huge impact to any team. So tough scenes for Haggy really because again like uh, we're seeing a similar situation to Claystair here when he had an offer on the table and where would this offer potentially have been just because I mean um, we're trying to theorize it really okay could it have been Los Angeles Grillers could it have been another team because you know I think LAG would have been an interesting target here but maybe you know there's other free agent coaches out there we've got the likes of Mark E. B. that might not be with Toronto Phoenix on Seattle Surge of free agents Sender of course another big name on Optic that might want to go to a team like LAG has experience of course with Arsities on the Chicago Huntsman day so maybe Sender Arsities a duo as kind of AR coach duo over there on um, of course LAG could work and maybe that's where Paris I wanted to go and now that's no longer on the table you also got guys like Bobble and JP Krez and like analyst kind of coaching staff duos that are now around the market as well potentially for acquisition so Haggy might have a difficult time here but hopefully Parasite can get a spot I think he'd be perfect as kind of like an assistant coach somewhere and of course LAG completely wiped the slate clean so I feel like that maybe that's an option but uh, maybe that fell through who knows so Parasite is still looking for other options as it stands and even as he says here yeah, trying to stay positive life's been eating away at me for quite some time don't really enjoy streaming anymore hopefully things turn around so hopefully things work out for Parasite and a similar boat really for Clayster. So it was two years ago yesterday that Dallas Empire won the Call of Duty League. Clayster went back to back. He won the Black Ops 4 World Championship. He won, of course, the Modern Warfare World Championship right after it. And then I guess today, two years ago, Clayster got dropped from this team because, of course, the squad had to go back to 4v4 and Clayster was going to be the odd man out going there into Cold War. And since then, of course, things have gone rather downhill for him. Now, this is the tweet that Clay comes out with last night. The grief this last week has made everything else seem insignificant and I've neglected to secure employment for next year. Looking like playing is chalked due to offers falling through. If anyone has a job opportunity let me know and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. So yeah, this is really tough reading honestly. I mean the point about the grief last week, if you guys haven't seen this tweet where he said this and he was doing some other tweets about Xanax and, and other drugs, really taking a massive toll on people's lives and you can only like, a, you know, we can only assume what might have happened here in his kind of, you know, close family, right? But as he says, you know, do me a favour, call your family, tell them you love them. So like, um, you know, I guess really between the lines here, there must have been some pretty, you know, difficult week internally within Clayster's family over the last few days. And it's obviously affected his week in a massive way, but also his, uh, you know, willingness to reach out and find opportunities, right? Because as he says, like, you know, the difficulties of this last week have made everything insignificant. So you can only imagine that Clayster's suffered some sort of, you know, loss within his family. And um, yeah, it's really taken a toll on him and understandably so. Now, the difficulty is, of course, for Clayster in terms of his future is now that if maybe he hasn't been responding to some of these guys, you know, Florida, Paris, Vegas, as they are now, like Boston, all this type of stuff, then maybe they've decided to go down different routes and have locked in players that now Clayster doesn't have the opportunity to go there anymore. So, I mean, yeah, this is a kind of the tweet thread that as he continues, from winning back-to-back -back champs two years ago on the day to out of the league, was willing to come considerably down on my salary and contract terms, got absolutely screwed over by a certain team, basically offering, and then me passing up teams to then have that team go in a different direction, lost options. We'll discuss that in a second. Still holding out hope that I can get a starting position somewhere but it's looking bleak. Figured I'd put out a tweet letting everyone know what I, whatever's next let me know if you have any idea because I sure don't right saying okay you know coaching analyst work on the desk for the league like general management whatever like I think Clay could do great in those roles whether it's just content or whatever but this is especially the interesting one that I wanted to talk about with you guys because I mean as he says he's willing to come down considerably on his contract terms his salary like he's willing to go to Vegas I'm surprised
surprised that because I thought that if Boston chose Zinni over Clay, as clearly they have, and that's what I imagine this is about, even though it's obviously far from guaranteed. He doesn't say specifically, but I thought if that was the case, Vegas would just you know snap him up, right? No problem at all. And yes, Clay might have to make less money, and probably Krim isn't willing to go to Vegas and have less salary, but Clay would be. Then they could come to an arrangement. But this is the interesting one. So we heard for quite a few days that Boston were undecided whether they were going to go down the route of getting Zinni, which of course they haven't now extended his deal, or getting Clay in. And um, it was kind of a, a question for them whether, okay, what do they do with Methods? Because of course he's been great for their brand presence, Boston. But, you know, does he, you know, is there more upside in getting Clay with what he can maybe get out of these other players? Like, is the awakening for TJ move enough to make that team to the point where they can actually be a, you know, championship contender? Probably not. So maybe Clay was a consideration, right? And then he says he got screwed over by this team offering me. And then I had to pass up other teams to then have them change their mind. So that sounds like what's gone on with Boston. Of course, we can't know for sure. But, um, you know, it would be interesting if Boston effectively gave Clay an offer and said, yeah, Clay, we want you. And then all of a sudden they then changed their minds and have now, of course, confirmed that Zinni's going to stay in the team. So, um, yeah, interesting few days there on Boston because I was actually quite convinced that, that Clay was going to be joining this team instead of Methods just on what was happening. And then, of course, Methods ends up staying. So Clay is now without a spot. And maybe because of the, you know, grief he's been suffering the last few days, he hasn't maybe replied in time to Vegas or to Florida or to London or whatever other offers that might even still be out there for him. And now those opportunities might have been going away because that's the big question to me about the Paris Legion or the Vegas Legion as they are now. I keep getting it wrong because, um, you know, they need an AR, right? And I think Tempest made it clear that he wants to be an AR player. Probably the flex makes the most sense to me, but I, I don't know if he's thinking he could run the main on this team. But um, and then he also wants TJ, right? As probably one of their SMGs. So I was thinking that Clay, Temp, and TJ as a team of three would make a fair bit of sense, plus like an aggro SMG. Like, um, and that could be a pretty solid squad, I thought, for Vegas. And I was thinking that if Clay doesn't get the Boston spot as he hasn't, then Vegas would just be a guarantee for him. But maybe they're now looking at other options. There is guys out there like Assault and other ARs, of course, that might have seen Clay, you know, or heard that Clay wasn't replying or whatever and decided to, you know, go for that opportunity. But the thing is with guys, Guys like, you know, Vegas or even Florida and these other organizations, they're not exactly going to be super quick to lock things in, right? Usually these guys will lock in their team last minute. So with that in mind, I still think there's a good chance here for Clay. Yes, it might not have been a good couple of weeks, but as he says, there still might be a chance for him. It's just looking rather slim. And um, and that's the thing, right? These teams can change their mind. If Clay now is now available and he's replying and he's saying, okay, I had a difficult few days, but, you know, I'm here to discuss contract terms and the like, then I think the teams will start to give him more of a look in, right? If I was Florida, if I was you know, like um, any of these organizations, I would at least heavily consider getting Clayster in the team. Maybe they will decide not to, but it would be crazy, right? If Clay doesn't get a spot, Krim doesn't get a spot, and two of the greatest players of all time that won the World Championship in Modern Warfare just two years ago yesterday are out of the league going into this upcoming season and forced to retire, not by their own volition. Like, that'll be such a remarkable turn of events, and I think a very bad decision, frankly, by some of these general managers, if, um, if those caliber of players, some of the greatest of all time, are, like, not even getting an offer, right? It's not like they're deciding to retire. They're getting forced into it. That's not really something that I'd ever thought I'd see the day where that would be the case. And that maybe it won't be the case, at least for one of the two. This also to mention here as we close out the video. So from Crowder, of course, big questions lately as to what's going to happen with Crowder with the Atlanta phase. I believe his bio still does not mention anything about, uh, you know, head coach of the team. So he hasn't put it back in yet. So Paul from Atlanta Esports Ventures comes out last night and says, because of course I've done a couple of videos suggesting the Crowder might be leaving phase. Of course, all the pointers, hints to towards that right now. Paul comes out and says he has yet to tell me he is quitting. Crowder, are you quitting us, right? Because that's the thing, because Atlanta Esports Ventures that runs the Atlanta phase is a different organization to Phase Clan, where if Crowder was going to do, co like if he was going to be a full-time content creator, he would effectively be quitting AEV and going to just Phase full-time. So it's not quite the same structure. Now, an interesting thread here, actually. Crowder comes back and says, you have $20 million sitting around for me over what period of time? Two years, so about 11.7 million a year. It's like sitting contracts in your inbox deal, he says. So, like, difficult to read into exactly what's going on here, but there is at least some discussions going on, and Crowder maybe is just messing around a bit. We don't really know what the case is here. Maybe Crowder's just baiting after all. My expectation is that he might not be involved on this team at a full-time capacity, but he probably will still be involved, I think, with the phase roster going into next year. It just makes too much sense for them not to have him, and even as Paul says, like um, he's obviously rather willing to come to some sort of deal to make sure Crowder stays around, because I think it's kind of a well-known phenomenon that having Crowder there plus Slasher is probably a good way to ensure that the kind of culture and the chemistry within this team maintains a good level, which is a fair bit of a risk with the face team going forward. So read into this what you will, but I think it could be argued that
that there's now a decent chance that Crowder returns to the team if they decide to offer him a certain amount of money, right? I think he'll probably still want to make more content this year than he's been able to in the past, but I think on a maybe a more part-time basis might be what they're planning to do. I suppose we'll see. But again, no real statement yet from Crowder on what exactly his plans are. And just a couple of things to finish out the video. This also actually I thought I'd mention just because it really has been quite some time since we've had a firing range, right? Of course, Advanced Warfare, World War II, Modern Warfare Master. We had this beautiful firing range you could go into and they don't seem to put them in anymore. So hopefully going into Modern Warfare 2, we'll get this thing to return. But very much intrigued to your thoughts on all this stuff in the comment section below. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did enjoy it, hit the like button. Tell us the YouTube gods. That's a good video. I'd also like you should see it as well. And I'll grow the competitive Call of Duty community. Thank you as always. Take care of yourselves and I'll see you next time.